In this example, we want to use the washer method to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the bounded region about the line x equals to 1. Okay. All right, so and all right, so our, our axis, okay, our axis of revolution is x equals to 1. That's what you see in red here. And our region, okay, our bounded region is, okay, so the region is bounded by y equals to x, which is what you see in blue here and x equals to 2, x equals to 6, and we have y equals 0, which is the x-axis, okay? So, so this is the, this trapezoid that you see here, that's the area that we're going to take and revolve around x equals to 1, okay? All right, so to do this, okay, uh, we need to, we need to subdivide this into two, two, two regions, okay? All right, so, and I'll explain this in a few seconds here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in, okay, so I'm gonna uh, draw in a line here to show you that, to show you the two regions. Okay, so the reason that we need uh, two regions, so I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this region one, which is for this, uh, rectangle and region two will be for this triangle. Okay, so the reason that we have to subdivide this into two regions is because for the if you look here on the rectangle here on the on the left side we have a vertical line, right? Okay, that's part of x equals to two. In region two we have this uh, the function here y equals to x. Okay, so the boundary right the boundary is changing. Okay, so it's going from x equals to two to y equals to x, okay? So whenever you have like a sharp turn like this, um, that usually indicates that we need to separate our regions, and then therefore we're gonna have two different integrals to handle this, okay? All right, so since we're using the washer method, right, we need to identify the outer radius and inner radius, okay? All right, so uh, capital R is, is for the outer radius, lowercase r is for the inner radius, okay? All right, so first, uh, let's uh, focus in, let's focus on the first region, okay? Okay, so volume of, volume of region one. Okay, so let's identify the uh, outer radius and inner radius for this. Okay. All right. So first, the okay, the the inner radius. Okay. So again, the radius are always measured from the axis of revolution. Okay. So the inner radius is going to be uh, just this piece here. Okay. Just this distance. So that is corresponding to to the hole here. Okay, so there's okay between x equals to one and x equals to, equals to two, uh, there is empty space here. Okay. All right. Again, we're taking this trapezoid and revolving it around x equals to one. So we have empty space here. Okay. So there's a hole here. Okay. So there's a hole here, right here, for uh, for just looking at for the first region. Okay, so that inner part, okay, the inner radius will be one, okay, and for the outer region, okay, the outer region is going to be, okay, again, it's measured from the axis of revolution, okay, so that's going to be the outer part, okay, so, all right, so R of Y, okay, 
So I'm going to call this the outer, so the outer radius. I'll just go ahead and abbreviate that. So the outer radius is going to be, okay, remember, and these are hors, these are acting, these are acting as horizontal pieces, okay? All right, and they're, remember, they're perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So this, so that means this integral has to be in terms of y. So, so r of y, okay, is going to be, Okay, in this case, it's just the distance between x equals to 6 and x, e x equals to 1. Okay, so it's going to be 6 minus 1, which gives us 5. Okay, the inner radius, okay, that's going to be abbreviated by IR. And so that's the right, lowercase r. So that's just the distance between x equals to 2 and x equals to 1. Okay, so that gives us a distance of one. So both the outer radius and inner radius are constant. Okay. All right, constant values. Okay, so now we have all the information to set up our integral. Okay, so I'm going to call the first uh, for the for the first corresponding region. I'm going to denote that volume. So when we take this, we're taking this region and revolving around the x equals one axis. Okay, so I'm going to call this V1. Okay, so that's going to be pi times the integral of, so our bounds, okay, this, for the, for this rectangular, for this rectangular region, the bounds is starting, is going from zero up to two, because when x is two, y is equal to two. Okay, so this is, remember, this is for y equals to x okay all right again so when x is 2 y is going to be 2 here okay okay so we're going to have right so our integral is going to go from 0 to 2 okay so we have 5 squared minus 1 squared dy Okay, we're integrating with respect to y. Okay, so that gives us pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 24 dy. Okay, so that is equal to, uh, we take the integral of 24, that's going to give us 24y. Evaluate from 0 to 2. So we're going to get pi times 24 times 2, okay. Okay, so that's going to give us 48 pi. Okay. So that's the volume from the first region. Okay. So now we got to find the volume for the second region. Okay. So, um, so the outer radius here, the outer radius will be the same. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that in. Okay. So again, it's always measured from the axis of revolution. Okay. Okay, so you can see, okay, again here, uh, the outer radius is going to be the distance between x equals to 6 and x equals to 1. Okay, so same thing as uh, region 1. Okay, so we have the outer radius r of y. It's going to be 6 minus 1, which is 5. Okay. All right, so the inner radius. Inner radius is a little bit trickier, okay, because uh, because we have this we have this uh, this boundary here, okay. So that is going to be measured again from the right, from the axis of revolution, okay, to 
this is going to be to the point on the on the line okay on the graph of y equals x okay okay remember that for region one there is space here okay and for region two we have uh, the space increases okay all right so the space is all here for for the second part okay all right so we need to figure out we need to you know figure out how to get the inner radius okay all right so we know okay uh, we know that the distance from the y-axis to okay, to this point on the graph of y equals x, that is the directed distance. So that simply is just y. Okay. 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 So that is just y, uh, some y units from the y-axis. Okay. All right. So we can get all right. So we can get our. Uh, we can now get our inner radius, okay? So what we do, okay, we know that the distance between the y-axis and x equals one is just one, okay? And so what we can do is we take y minus one, okay, and that will give us the inner radius, okay? All right, so. Okay, so again, from here, Okay, between the y-axis and x equals 1 is just, right, this is just 1. So we take y minus 1, and that will leave us with the inner radius for region 2, okay? Okay. All right, so we have, okay, for the inner radius, Okay, just uh, we have y minus one. Okay. Okay, so now we have everything here. We can go ahead and uh, set up our integral. So I'm going to call this v two corresponding to the second region. Okay. So the bounds here. Okay. So this is. Okay. This is going from. Okay, starting from when x is two, this is when this is going to be for y equals to two. Okay, and then when x is six, y is going to be equal to six. Okay, so this point up here. Okay, so that's going to correspond to this. Okay, to six. So we're going to right, go from two to six. Okay. Okay, so we have the outer radius, okay, which was five, so that's five squared minus the inner radius squared. Okay. Okay, so now we can go ahead and simplify this. Okay, so we're gonna have pi, okay. times the integral from two to six. Okay, this is going to be 25 minus y minus one squared. So that's gonna be y squared minus two y plus one, okay, dy. Okay, and this is going to simplify, give us pi times the integral from two to six of 25. So we have 25 minus one, so we go ahead and write that as 24. Okay, minus y squared plus two y. Okay, so then Taking the integral, okay, we have 24y minus one third y cubed plus two y squared over two. So that will just give us y squared there. Okay. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so. Okay, so now we just evaluate this. 
from 2 to 6. Okay, so we're going to have 24, let's see, 24 times 6. Minus one third times six cubed plus six squared okay. minus pi. Okay, you're putting in two, so we have twenty four times two minus one third two cubed plus two squared. Okay. Okay, so this is going to give us okay, pi. So pi times we get 144 here. So 24 times 6 is 144. Uh, 6 cubed divided by 3, that will give us, so that's going to be minus 72 plus 36. And we're going to get 48 minus 8 thirds plus four. Okay. Okay, so we get uh, 144 minus 72 plus 36, that's gonna be 108 pi. Okay. And 48 minus 8 third plus four will give us uh, so that's going to give us a positive 148 over 3, so we get minus 148 over 3 pi. Okay, so that's going to be 176 thirds pi. Okay. So this is the volume for the corresponding to the uh, second region, okay? Okay, so now the total volume, we just have to add these two together, okay? So total volume, Going to be V1 plus V2. So for V1, we got 48 pi. And for volume 2, okay, we had 176 thirds pi. So that's going to give us 320 thirds pi. Okay, so that is our solution, okay? And again, um, if this was an application prompt, this would be units cubed, okay? All right. So again, we have to partition this bound, we have to partition partition this region, okay? Because again, this, this the boundary on the left side changes. So it's going from x equals to two to x equals to y here, okay? And then for each region, we found the outer radius and inner radius. So we do that, we have to do that geometrically. So that's just using some basic geometry, okay? And then we, um, using that, we can set up our integral, okay? So the first region was going between zero and two. The second region was going between two and six, okay? Okay, so we got those results and we just add those two. And that's the solution. So that is the total volume of, for this structure.